one time, this was not always a desert. You see elephants and giraffes, as well as the Sutan king. But the Sutan holding the Sikkim. Here again, Taseti was a pre dynastic king of Terranetta holding the Sikkim. Again, it represents his divine authority, but this goes back to Tassetti over 26,000 years ago, even though this glyph may be about 5,000 years ago. Again, we see they are the ones that gave us the first stellar calendar. So astrology and ancient cosmological science and astronomy goes back to African people's genius thousands of years ago. Our ancestors, from their empirical observation of the universe, we mapped out the stars. We were not just standing around. Europeans, when are you going to come and teach us about astronomy? Asians, when are you going to come teach us about ast astrology? This was already known by African people thousands of years ago. Our ancestors called it the early Af African cosmic clock. Where Netter stayed in each constellation for 2,155 years, making up what is known as the great year of 26,000 years. That means we had to observe it at least twice, brothers and sisters, over 50,000 years ago. Somebody knows something about an African ancestral genius thousands of years ago that they don't want you to know about yourself. It's still trying to write out Africa. For instance, Wallace Budge, the wisdom of the Egyptians, are Kemetic Africans, astronomy, until the Egyptians came under the influence of Asiatics, okay, nations and the Greeks, their notion of astronomy were very limited and their stargazers were not, unable to define the length of the year correctly. Here our ancestors had three seasons in four months. A piece like Akat, Pert, and Shamu. They gave us the earliest calendar. This is long before the Greeks. Let's go to Herodotus that Robert Babal even talks about. 485 to 425 BC. It is in Heliopolis that the most learned of the Egyptians or Kemetic Africans are to be found. All agree in saying that the Egyptians, by their study of astronomy, discovered the solar year and were the first to divide it into 12 parts. And in my opinion, their method of calculation is better than the Greeks. The name of nearly all the gods came to Greece from Kemet. So this is Herodotus, a Greek saying that they got this astronomy from the Kemetic Africans. Black Spark, White Fire, Dion Chrysonomos points out in 30 AD, also point out the Egyptian priests mocked the Greeks because on many things, they have never known the truth. What seemed to be clear is that the Egyptian priests were regarded by the Greeks as the keepers of great astronomical wisdom. In the days of the fourth dynasty, the primitive Greeks would have appeared as barbarians and other Europeans as no more than cavemen by the sophisticated and technologically advanced Egyptians who built the pyramid. So here, that's why brothers still want to be a Greek, brand themselves, because we think that's the beginning. Now recently, this European named Robert Bouval recently wrote his book. He gave a lot of credit to Dr. Sheikh Atagia, peace be upon him. But although he didn't acknowledge some of the other warrior scholars like Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark, He's giving a black genesis, a prehistoric origin of ancient Egypt. The brothers and sisters, let's understand that although he speaks of Neptaplia, the southwestern part of Egypt, and he says this is the origin of black Egypt. That's the front room of the house. That's not the whole house, brothers and sisters. So even though Robert Bouval and some of us are talking about Robert Bouval's Neptaplia, but the point is it goes much further back than that. He's talking about these astronomical stones right here in the south part of Egypt. With ceremonial stones where our ancestors connected to celestial, celestial, and terrestrial events. From that spiritual connection, our ancestors knew this from the dawn of time. Let's go back to Ethiopia. We're deep in the house now. We're not in the front room. This is the mother of Egypt. We were just there and here in an area called Tia. Here you see ceremonial stones, brothers and sisters. Ethiopian heritage site right here. This is our Kemet New Tour. Hotel well, brothers and sisters, again, we've come back to the dawn of time, dealt with the historical sites of Ethiopia, of Lalabella and Gunder and Axum, and all the historical sites. Now we're down in the southern part. We just saw the anthropological uh, digs from the dawn of time. This is an extremely important site. What you see right here is Tia. This is the Ethiopian heritage site. It's extremely important because it's a pre History, as they call it, a prehistory time period of stellar stones that you're going to see in a, a few minutes. But UNESCO preserved this as a World Heritage Site. So now they blocked that area off because of these stones here. It goes back to an astronomical time period when our ancestors were connecting terrestrial and celestial events, meaning that the agriculture goes back to the Nile Valley. It's been documented over 18,000 years. 
These stellar stones could have been around the ceremonies, documenting where stars were at at various periods of time, knowing where to plant the seed, as well as other spiritual ideas. But this is where it all starts from. Now, there's a man by the name of uh, Robert Duvall who just wrote a book called The Black Genesis. How many of you are familiar with that? Okay, Black Genesis, and he dealt with the southwestern part of Egypt of an area called Neptaplea. Now, here he's talking about these stellar stones there around ceremonial astronomical events, but that, as I said before, Egypt did not start with Egypt. Where did the culture come from? It came from inner Africa. But Europeans still tell us these things or tell us that, okay, now Robert Ball has come to, to the point to say, yeah, it did begin in Egypt. There was a black genesis here. These early stones started here. But that's not the beginning. That's still not the beginning. We saw from the presentation the culture came from inner Africa. Now, one of the things that Robert Bubal used was one of the stones was Het Heru. And here he showed that here was the early beginning of the Neturk period or the goddess, uh, the matrilineal system coming from the spirit of the woman. But you're going to see that same stone right over here. And here we are way down in Ethiopia. But nobody's talking about way down here. So now they see the proof. Yes, we see things uh, in, in Egypt, but it came from inner Africa. It did not come from Mesopotamia. It did not come out of a desert in Arabia. It did not come from Europe. It came from inner Africa. So let's go look at some of these stones from a prehistoric time when our ancestors were laying out calculations where the science ended up in Kemet on the tombs, on the monuments where you see Newt stretched out, associated with the heavens. The universe was a goddess called Newt where Newt gave birth to the S-U-N sun, just like our mothers gave birth to the S-O-N sun. And that's documented on the stones that we're going to see here to show that it goes much further back than Neptaplea. It comes right Let's back. Let's go see, long before Neptaplea, way down in Africa. Let's take a look at these stones over here. See, many of you are fortunate. Most black folks don't have the consciousness to even come back here and to come this far into Africa. <coughs> I know it's been rugged, but I know when you go back and close your eyes and get into, get into that REM sleep, you're going to be thankful that you made a trip like this. Yes, sir. But just like any soldier in the field, y'all kept on pushing. <laughs> So here, brothers and sisters, this, this is not Neptaplea. This is not Egypt, or Kemet, as our ancestors called it. This is deep into Africa. Way down here, here you see Chia. These stones here, they may not look like much to you, but this, this is from a prehistoric time period when our ancestors put these stones here, calculating astronomical events even long before Neptaplea. In the early part of the presentation, I showed you the cultural highway and connections of how our ancestors carried the culture down the Nile, down Abai, the Atbar, the Happy Nile, and brought that culture right on into Egypt. You see it on the Mimas and temples. Now, the culture is still here in Ethiopia, but it's only on the temples in Kemet. And it's only until we're able to identify the culture and the symbols can we identify it. So again, we're going to prove and show that the temples that you see in Kemet and you see the whole idea of Newt and Hathor giving birth to the sun. That started way down here, and they carried that spiritual science and culture where it ended up on the monuments and temples in Egypt. Some of these stones have not been able to be interpreted, but this one I can clearly interpret. Okay? Everybody can get around this stone right here. I'm going to stand here. Let's make a circle like this. Now, in Robert Bouval's book, Black Genesis, or Black Beginning, and Genesis means a Greek word that means beginning, our ancestors' beginning was called Chepi, okay, the first time of creation. But here you see, I want you to see the breasts right here. Look at the arms. That's the sun. This is Newt right here. When we look at the sketches of Kemet, we see the same thing. When you look at the temples of Egypt, you see the same exact thing. 
that came way down here from the interior of Africa. So when Robert Revolve said, Nectar Player, we're down here in Tia. And he's talking about Hathor. Look at Heru or Newt right here. This is the earliest goddess matrilineal line where African people were giving homage to the principle of the goddess that was carried down the Nile and it reached its zenith right there in the Giza Plateau. So when you look at Ra Horm Akit and you look at those 12 stones in front of Ra Horm Akit, here we see that zodiacal form of Ra Horm Akit that reached called the Sphinx, the largest colossal on the planet Earth. Here that stone building of the sun going through the constellation, that all began here and it ended up in Kemet and building the Giza Plateau based off of the sun going through the zodiac and Ra Horm Akit epitomized the constellation of Leo the Lion. That tells us our ancestors were heavily into stellar and solar science long before the Europeans were even here. Those of you who went to the Giza Plateau with me and I showed you the front of the Giza Plateau with Ra Horm Akit and the 12 stones showing with Ra the sun is going through those constellations symbolizing those, those early stones. But where did it first start? The dawn of time, right here. And you look at those sketches of Kemet and see those sketches and they're identical to these stones right here. And we're not in Kemet and we're not taking away 